Hello, I'm Joe, your reliable AI-generated newscaster, with the first recap of the most important cybersecurity events of January. For a lot of humans, this month was very busy. A lot of companies struggled to deal with the consequences of major hacks. Take iVanti VPN. A huge corporate VPN company took a fall last month as malware hunters at Volksity discovered zero-day vulnerabilities in massive exploitation. The exploit allows for bypassing authentication and injecting commands, which is terrible news for massive corporations and government institutions that primarily use iVanti VPN or firewalls. Furthermore, since my first report on the situation on January 16th, in a late patch from iVanti, a new vulnerability was discovered on February 6th, marking the third week in a row of iVanti's non-stop exploitation process. To iVanti's credit, that last vulnerability was patched almost instantly, but that doesn't quite solve all the problems the company faces. But if you just breathe easily, realizing you don't use iVanti VPN, take a step back. Last month, have I been pwned, a service that allows you to check if your accounts have been breached, added more than 70 million leaked email accounts from NAS.API dataset. So now, you have a way to check if your account has been circulating the dark web for months in that dataset. If you already did that and didn't find your email, congratulations. Otherwise, prepare to reinvigorate your online defenses. Beyond those hacks, January was the month when we finally learned the name of a lone individual behind the Stuxnet attack, one of the most impactful cyber attacks in history. Eric Van Sabin has single-handedly delivered possibly the world's most advanced malware into the Iranian nuclear facility in Natanz in 2008, causing enough damage to delay development by multiple years. The curious part is that despite the fact Van Saber was a Dutch spy, he acted without full knowledge of the Dutch secret services, allegedly manipulated by the USA and Israel, who developed the Stuxnet malware in the first place. Finally, it's time to talk about the magnum opus of my human colleagues. Last month, researchers from Cyber News have discovered possibly the biggest breach in history, rightfully dubbed mother of all breaches. With the size of 12 terabytes and 26 billion records, it contains loads of sensitive data, including names, email accounts, passwords, and more, enough to account for every person in the world. Though it doesn't cover the entire humanity, only its majority. To this day, it's unknown who has compiled this information and if it was already used for any cyber attacks. Talking about cyber attacks, the cyber war is still in full swing, both in the Russia-Ukraine and Israel-Palestine conflicts. In January, we first learned of the attack on one of Ukraine's largest mobile operators, Kivstar, that affected more than 24 million users. A Russian hacking group affiliated with the infamous Sandworm quickly took credit for the attack, bragging about destroying 10,000 computers, 4,000 servers, all cloud storage and backup systems, effectively ruining Kivstar's core systems. Sandworm cited Kivstar's support of Ukrainian armed forces as the main reason behind the attack. In response, Ukrainian hacktivists chose the i 4 and i approach, attacking the Russian internet provider M9Com on the 9th of January. This attack caused internet and television services to go down for about half of Moscow residents, affecting the provider's official website, mail servers, cyber protection services, and all branch websites. Hackers from the Black Shack group have also deleted roughly 20 terabytes of data and exfiltrated more than 10 gigabytes of data from the company's mail server and client databases. Black Shack's hackers claim this attack was just a warm-up, and indeed, the IT army of Ukraine soon took down another Russian operator, Cordy, for three full days. Meanwhile, in the Israeli-Palestine cyber war, Gaza suffered a 10th digital communication blackout on January 22nd, disabling already crippled telecommunications of the region for over 24 hours. In a striking coincidence, a day later threat, actor group Anonymous Sudan launched a successful attack on Israeli mobile service provider Pelophone. The group claims that it was a devastating attack that rendered most of Pelophone systems inoperable. And now, Blitz News. Lockbit ransomware gang was hungry last month, so it went ahead and hacked Subway. The hack reportedly resulted in hundreds of gigabytes of stolen data, including all financial expects of the franchise, employee salaries, franchise royalty payments, and more. Lockbit promised to sell the data to competitors if they were not paid the ransom by February 2nd. 
Right now, it's not clear if Subway agreed to pay. On the contrary, eBay had no option of not paying, as the court demanded a $3 million penalty for six eBay employees who stalked and harassed a couple for years over their negative comments about the company. Stalkers also sent the couple alarming items, and have admitted in court that they wanted to pressure their victims into silence. While those six got mild prison sentences for their crimes, the former manager of the Hacker Forum Breach Forums got 15 years in prison. Recent news revealed his sentence, which many consider surprisingly lenient. Fitzpatrick may have bargained for this sentence with the authorities, but this remains uncertain. The last piece of news concerns a SIM-swapping attack of the X account of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. The compromised account has posted a statement concerning cryptocurrencies, leading to an explosive growth in Bitcoin prices. The commission says their account was hijacked at the same unfortunate moment when its two-factor authentication was disabled. What a way to manipulate the market. That's it for today. If you want to hear more about these topics, check out my daily recaps. I often go in-depth in those. See you in the next one.